Time now for us to take a look at what's making news in the aviation sector. Uh, this week we're joined by Ben Vogel, editor of IHS Jane's Airport Review. Uh, ben, welcome to the briefing. Uh, we, we've got a bit of a theme uh, for everything we're talking about uh, today in uh, in aviation news. Uh, it's all about how we how we actually board a plane, how we get from outside the airport um, into uh, into the into the lovely world of duty free. Um, Let's let's talk about uh, liquids first. Okay. Does it look like we're going to finally be able to take our water bottles and our hair gel and everything else through the scanners? Well, that's a general idea, but um, perhaps there is some light at the end of the tunnel, but it's going to take a little bit of time before we're finally back to uh, near to where we were before the um, infamous uh, attempted uh, uh, attacks in, in August uh, 2006. Um, what's happening in Europe is that, that at long last, uh, it looks as though European airports are about to lift some of the restrictions on the passengers to uh, taking through the liquids, aerosols and gels through the checkpoint. Um, it's going to happen in three distinct phases, beginning with phase one, as you might expect, on the first, 31st of January 2014. And, and so it's still going to be it's still going to take us a little bit of time before we're actually going to do it talk us through the, the technology that's enabling them to sort of change this i mean is, is there actually a technological change or is it just you know they've come to their senses to a certain extent oh definitely the uh it, te- technology plays a, a massive role in in formulating this change of policy there are different types of technology that are being deployed that will enable passengers to take through some of their liquids. Um, Firstly, there are bottle scanners, uh, which, uh, as the name suggests, allow passengers to take their their, their containers of liquids and have them scanned and then proceed through the checkpoint. But uh, there are also more complex technologies that um, are conveyor-based. So you you, you take the liquids, put them in the tray, as as we do at the moment. Um, They go through and they're scanned reliably Therefore, when you go through the checkpoint, you can pick the, the liquids up and go through. Um, but be that as it may, the technology that exists at the moment um, still means that passengers have to take out their laptops and iPads before going through the checkpoint. So there's still, even with the technology that's currently available, even with the technology that's coming up, there will be inconvenience for passengers even after the final phase of this in 2016. Okay, and then uh, the other thing we need to get through uh, security is is ourselves. Um, body scanners we're seeing uh, all over the world now, um, and it looks like they're going to be uh, more of them are going to be introduced here in the UK. That's absolutely right. Yes, there was an announcement by the Transport Secretary Patrick McLaughlin on the 21st, so uh, very recently, um, to say that uh, nine more UK airports are going to be using body scanners. And there are two other airports that are currently trialling the technology where it's going to be fully implemented, and that brings the total number of airports in the UK that are going to be using these systems to 19. So if you're flying out of the UK in the near future, the chances are that there is going to be a body scanner at the checkpoint. You can still refuse to go through, in which case you you have what what's called a private search, um, which uh, uh, means a manual pat down basically. Um, but if you refuse even to go through that, then you won't be allowed to board the plane. So but the, uh, body scanners are here to stay. But I mean, when we talk about the, the privacy issues with with body scanners, um, I, I used one in in Sydney uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and you, you go through it, and then you come out the other side, and there's a there's a picture, essentially like a stick man, with a uh, with a little sort of uh, mark a, across each part where they think they might have seen something, and then they just yeah pat you on your leg to see whether actually that is you know your keys that you've left there or something else. They, 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 they what's actually seen there, right there by other passengers, isn't invasive at all, is it? That's correct. Now, um, when this technology was, was uh, uh, first uh, mooted as a, as, a, as a solution, the images from some of these systems was, were, were, were actually quite realistic. So there was actually a representation of the individual being scanned. You could actually see their, their, their body in, in, under their clothes. In all its glory. And, so on and, so forth. and that caused, predictably, quite a lot of uh, upset and, and you know, 
quite understandably among among the travelling public. So the technology manufacturers and the regulators got together and they developed this rather, well, apparently low-tech solution. It looks very low-tech, doesn't it? The 2D it does, mannequin yeah. style stick man or stick woman. Um, but um, that's, that's all that's needed, really. I mean, you don't actually have to get a, a, a fully realistic picture of the passenger. All the, all the operator of the technology needs to see is a potential position on the body or on the clothing of, uh, of a threat item. So uh, a generic two-dimensional image is all that's needed. Ben Vogel, we'll leave it there. Uh, editor of IHS, IHS Jane's Airport Review.